<laughs> Good morning, sunshines. Anyways, yeah. let's, let's. I'm do it. I, okay. So I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to do this. So I'm prepared. Okay, cool. And then I'm going to do this, and da, 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 the three, and a two, and a one. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. Did the, 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 the sound stop? Oh, uh, I, think Gary's Gary? I think Gary's No, frozen. and that's Gary. <laughs> No, oh, there we go. Did you move? He's back. Are you no, back? No, he's moving. Are you back? I've been here the whole fucking time. I haven't heard you say <laughs> anything. Don't hurt that nobody. Makes me Gary. With your bad self. Okay, I didn't know when to do that because of the whole thing. Anyways, welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of a Determined Length, episode number uh, 508. Hold on. Mm-hmm. Girl, are you actually frozen or did we just like. Did you just like stay perfectly still for like two <laughs> Cause it looked like you were frozen. Just saying. Okay, so obviously you couldn't hear me. No. So I was really frozen because right at the end of, of David's audio cue, I did my intro. And then like that's when I figured out things were wrong because of the way you two were acting. I was like, What? Oh. I don't uh, know. Okay. Well. It's all good now. Just fine everything's Let it go. fine here how are you uh-huh. anyways gary what are we talking about today okay so today's episode is possibly the pilot episode of another new series because we love doing that here apparently yes we're series lovers uh, yeah so this one comes from chris g we're not lovers uh, in a series we're just series lovers it's the, the yeah, it's not a centipede kind of thing. So, um, <laughs> sorry. Ooh, I mean, good morning, everyone. It could just be a string of guys eating ass, but you know, <laughs> which to oh put my a God, slightly more pleasant. Other... <laughs> Anyways, never mind. I'm not even. I want to make a COLDR reference. I'll go. We'll get to that later tonight. I'm sure. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> um, to rewind the the, the time machine, uh, a few months ago, we got an email submission from Chris G, and he said uh, some complimentary things about what he likes about what we do. There's some other podcasts that he listens to, and then he had an idea for us to consider. Uh, I don't know if he really meant like a whole series, but he said that we kind of already do this in a way. Like sometimes we'll get um, into a discussion about a topic in a way that will kind of bounce around what we feel that particular item is, what defines it, that kind of stuff. So uh, based on that, like we're going to discuss the topic is or the show is what is self love? It is hmm. when you love yourself. Oh, there. Thank you for coming, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, if it, 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 I think to... part of this was spawned from the fact that, that Gary and I did, did an episode where we were talking about what is dating, right? Uh, yeah. I mean, we've, we've kind of discussed similarly in the past but i like how chris was framing it like you know that you basically break down what is something uh Mm -hmm. take a take a particular phrase a term or something and then kind of figure out from there how you 
feel about that item? Do you, is everyone in agreement? Do we like, is there a Wikipedia or a urban dictionary version? Like, you know, are there alternate ways that people might think of it? Uh-huh. So, uh, and I had a different idea and then I scrapped it because I was like, it's just not very exciting. And then I was, uh, I don't even know what made me think of, um, Oh, I know what it was. Anyways, I'll save that for after the show. Um, what made me think of self-love, and then I was like, oh, but there are different ver- forms and versions of self-love. That's true. So, like, if I was to ask each of you individually, what do you consider self-love? We probably would get different answers. Masturbation. See, that's one. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, just just to be clear for everybody who is not in, who who if you're not a patron not to hear or see the post show um uh, uh i'm working overnights so this is after work for me and it's 9 a.m my time almost day, almost then so i'm a little loopy well you're no. far more wide awake no <laughs> no <laughs> no not at all oh yeah so go ahead gary go ahead so i mean like well to me that was kind of the obvious like it is Mm -hmm. silly but it is true like um you could say that some of us or a great majority of us self-love on the daily or however often sometimes twice a day i mean or three four times a day depending on just how much you want to love yourself Mm -hmm. (laughs) um but I, I, it also, I found it slightly intriguing because here's the thing. When I came out in 92, when I was much younger, and then I got introduced to the bear community in 99, um, I had spent like seven years being uncomfortable being gay. And I've talked about that on, before on the podcast in various ways. But what I realized is that I just didn't feel okay with how I looked and how I um, was perceived by others. And part of that was my local community. Um, It was also culturally the time that we were in, um, in terms of like a gay community, you know, the advocate was a huge magazine at the time, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, uh, the products that were being pushed at us, everything was about like kind of that Abercrombie Fitch Calvin Klein model look. Oh God, Um, girl. Right. And so, you know, and being a a thicker guy, um, you know, a, a, a cub with some meat on him, you know, well, and fat to be fair um (laughs) you know it just i found it very difficult to integrate into my local gay society and feel okay and like there were guys that were like taking tea um as in testosterone locally um you know from their doctor or whatever and you know had these like tan ripped bodies and like i mean it was just it was a very interesting time frame so when i found out about the bear community i was kind of like oh you mean like i can just look the way i look and that'll be okay like people are are comfortable with that now all these years later in my mid 40s what i'm recognizing is is that i spent decades absorbing weirdly critical messages and it's messed me up in some ways that i you know sure i talk about like loving yourself and and that kind of stuff but the reality Mm -hmm. is is that i'm still hypercritical of how i look and how i feel oh yeah Mm -hmm. oh yeah um and so self-love is kind of like a i think an umbrella term that's used for a lot of things and one of them is like how do you like accept who you are Mm -hmm. and um are you comfortable with that or okay with that and how do you move through the world and it's one of the things that i find as a sexy quality in other people um some people call it confidence but to me, confidence is a, is a projection of self love. Like, if you truly like who you are as a person, and like don't obsess about flaws or negatives or whatever, I think you carry mm-hmm. yourself to the world. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I probably would find that attractive because I would be like, I would not mind some of that, whether yeah. you know it's on me or in me. But, um... <laughs> girl, <laughs> but my like, yeah, I kind of get that. Um, totally understand that. Um, like, I honestly, I think for a lot of us, when we found the com- bear community, we kind of found the thing that clicked. The community that, for a while at least, um, was we saw ourselves and other people, 
um, which kind of makes you feel more better, more better. God damn it. Feels <laughs> feel better about yourself um, in some ways. Um, yeah, I'm tired, yeah I could see that. Yeah. Like it just, it's, yeah, it's like one of those things where like, oh, like there's a guy that is maybe my size, about the same size as me, or maybe a little bit bigger, maybe smaller ish, but like around the same size as me, maybe about the same build, maybe about the same height. And that's someone that is also getting attention and affection in this realm, in this community. And there's no real like major issues, judgment. They're not getting called out or not, you know, getting um, humiliated, stepped on, whatever. Cause I'm not saying that that happened at the gay bars, but that's kind of the things we got, like you said, like inputted into our minds over time, you know, in order to be gay, you had to be, like thin and little and and whatever mm. and you know really nice hair and all this shit and no hair on your body and swimmers build and all that sh- you know we got that you know fed to us constantly and constantly and then you then see like that's definitely not you and then, but you then find this area this community that is basically anti that in a lot of ways i mean not that there aren't you know, hunters and stuff that are within that kind of look. But you get that, you find that acceptance. And I think that's the most important thing is that you find people that will accept you despite your size or because of your size in some ways. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that makes you feel good. Like that that general overall acceptance, which you weren't finding elsewhere and you find it here, it's kind of like a, it's a, it's a good feeling mm-hmm. and you kind of want those good feelings to last. Yeah. So I, I also think that, that with self love, I think the first thing t- that you have to do, especially before you try to do any changes, like if you recognize flaws, you can't obsess about it. You first need to understand, Hey, I like myself for who I am. Yeah. I have these things that I don't like, but uh, if you don't love yourself already, it's. I think it's more probably more difficult to um, improve yourself. Ooh. Okay, Owen. So, go on with your bad self. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. And it, it's just like, okay, I like. And some people are like, uh, I really don't like my weight. I'm. I'm okay right now as long as I'm healthy uh, and everything. I'm okay with that. What can I do for progress? I'm going to do it. And it kind of gives you that motivation being like, I love myself for who I am right now. And I know what I can do to help improve myself for things mm-hmm. such as losing weight, gaining muscle. Maybe you are a gainer and want to gain more weight or something. But if you want to properly get those goals you want for yourself, whether physically or even mentally, you kind of mm-hmm. need to accept and get that essentially self love of what you are right now and find mm-hmm. and even if you try to do, do something to uh, progress in one of those goals um it if you don't necessarily make the meet the full criteria of what you're trying to shoot for any anything of progression for that should be happy and you shouldn't mm-hmm. necessarily put yourself down just because you fell off the wagon. You're trying to lose some weight and you ended up gaining five pounds or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you say, okay, yeah. I gained some five pounds. I fell off. That's right. It's okay. It's it's not a bad thing. It happens, you know, like especially near the end of the year during Thanksgiving and Christmas season. <laughs> um, you know, you fall off the wagon. Be be like that's okay. I recognize I, I I fell off the wagon for this. I'm gonna get back up and I'm gonna get right back on track, and not be putting yourself down for that because putting yourself down is kind of like a self hatred. It's like oh, why yeah. the heck did I do that? And, and it's like no, you recognize it, accept it, and move on. So having so as I said, you have to love what you are in order to meet any of those goals of what you want mm-hmm. to be um, yeah 
and, and, and having that acceptance and, and everything. Because if for some reason, maybe you're genetically not inclined to lose weight, you're always going to have this certain weightage. Maybe try converting it to see what you can do to convert it to muscle. You may gain a little mm-hmm. weight because it's muscle, but uh, might be an improvement, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's one of the things that I personally have tried, like, am, have been dealing with for a while um, since, uh, gosh, I think since I moved into the house and started eating regularly and constantly. Um, <laughs> I've gained, I mean. <laughs> I will own when I live by myself, like I would like have a meal a day, like that would be it. Like I'd go to dinner or I'd make a dinner and that would be my meal. Like there wasn't like, anyway, so I didn't eat well, but I was, you know, smaller, whatever. I've gained weight. I own, I have, I think I've talked about this on the show um, several times. Um, I self love. Because I know that I have, in fact, gained weight. Am I happy with my body? No, I'm not 100% happy with my body all the time. But I also know, as I've mentioned, that I'm not right now doing the things I need to do to lose the weight. Which I'm okay with. Like, I'm, I understand that I should probably lose weight. But I'm not making the personally not making the efforts to try and do it i have been recently because you know as everyone saw heard last week uh, i have a new condition that's <laughs> changing i'm gonna have to change my diet in quite a bit of ways so um that's gonna probably mean some weight's gonna get lost because i've already been losing weight which is great but Yay. not the way i not the way i wanted to necessarily lose weight <laughs> but that's hey. necessarily <laughs> the healthiest way to do it you know, no, progress um, but not progress how i want to do but progress <laughs> looking at the bright but, side um, there's progress true so with that um you know my you know way i feel about it is that i'm accepting where i am right now and when i decide meaning i decide to make the changes i'll make the changes mm-hmm. if that makes sense Right. The the thing that often happens, so you know, with our community as well, is we tend to want to change ourselves for other people. Like, oh, maybe we don't feel attractive, or people don't want us. So we do things because we think that'll make other people like us, and that's not the reason mm-hmm. necessarily to do those things. Sometimes you should do them for yourself. Like everything you do, and self love. You should do for yourself, not for other people. Yeah. You know? So if, um, if, if you're thinking about doing something because you want to, like, you feel like you'll become more attractive or something like that, um, be doing that more of, of, while it is kind of for other people, you have to be like, no, that is really what I want to be like. Mm-hmm. Or if it's like, no, I like how I am right now, I'm not going to lose a bunch of weight or gain a bunch of muscle just because but because I'm really attracted to this really hot guy. Um, mm-hmm. y- you want to make sure that you're doing it for you first and then mm-hmm. everybody else is secondary. And it could just be what other people are thinking can inspire you and, and you have people that encourage you to do it. But as long as you want to do that, if you really... Uh, if, if this is really what you want in the end, not just what somebody else wants, because people come and go because you may be trying to attract this one guy, but that's one guy. Mm-hmm. Um, that guy may just never be attracted to you, even if you lose weight or gain muscle or become fat, bigger or something like that. I mean, whatever yep. what they would be attracted to. You need to to be like, oh, you know what? That guy would think that I'd be hotter if I'm a slinner. Do I think I would be hotter if slinner? Like, you always always consider your own opinion, your own uh, feelings on the matter before you actually do things. Because if you don't want to do that, if that's not something that's really something that you want probably not necessarily a great idea well Mm -hmm. i mean to be fair life is complicated and there's so many different aspects or pieces that make it up and you have to 
balance all of that stuff out. And I think when the first of the year comes around, you know, in American society, we have this whole focus on like, okay, the holidays are over and now I need to lose the weight that I just gained from all that, like, you know, caloric splurging and holiday celebration and all that kind of stuff. And so some might say that, you know, all the, uh, going to the gym and changing your diet and healthier eating is an aspect of self love. Um, but I, I hear what you're saying, Jeff, in that, you know, are you really doing it for you? Are you doing it because that's what society is saying that we should be doing? Mm-hmm. Are we being, you know, mindlessly kind of just following along with what other, uh, you know, individuals are doing or because that's uh, what is expected of us? So to speak, uh-huh. I mean, this is, you know, it kind of goes back to that whole, like, well, it's what we've always done. It's like, yeah, well, that doesn't mean you always have to do it. Um, doesn't mean you're right. I mean, it, one of the things that I found really profound recently was I um, was looking at an old photograph of myself from, oh, good golly. Uh, I'm going to say probably <clears throat> uh, around 2000. I guess I'll put uh-huh. it that way. So we're talking almost 20 years ago and I looked at it and I was like, wow, I was so like young, but like healthier, like in terms of physical body Uh and all of a sudden like something clicked and I was like, wow, that's crazy because I didn't feel that way then. I remember how I felt despite how I looked Mm -hmm. and and I was unfortunately like in a, not in a good mindset in terms of like my own like self care and my own self love in that I felt that I looked worse, like was not as uh, attractive or um, interesting to other individuals. And I don't know. It's just a really interesting counterpoint out to look back and be like, "Mm, that was really foolish. Like Mm -hmm. to not be able to see yourself the way other people see you. Mm -hmm. Because at the time I know I was getting people who were drawn to me, who were attracted to me, who, you know, uh, liked being around me and, you know, life changes. Some of these people are not around necessarily anymore, um, you know, due to distance and time and there's nothing wrong with that happening. But what I think about now more than anything is how I would have liked to know then in a way what I know now, which is like Mm -hmm. not fair given time and all that. Uh, But yeah, it's, it's interesting to kind of think back and be like, Oh, if I recognize then how much better I was in some ways than I am, you know, today, then I could have probably made some even better choices along the way in terms of like my own uh, self love, so to speak. And that's one of the things I guess I've been thinking about a lot recently, given uh, the circumstances over the past year or so, is how I I have limited time. I mean, technically, we all have limited time, but I guess it's really been weighing on my mind about, like, what is the future going to hold for me? What am I going to, you know, request of it? What am I going to make of it? And I think that goes back to, like I was saying, you know, finding people interesting or you want to be around them or um, that you – appreciate what they accomplish and what they do because they are more i don't want to say engaged in life but like they seem to be more in the moment and Uh part of that is like how they feel about themselves and how they carry themselves and the things that they do Uh Um, you know and i think that self-love is a big piece of it but i also think that we as an american society have a tremendous amount of work to be done Uh in terms of like how we see ourselves and what it is that we value and what comes about from that. And it's, and it's not great. And I don't, and the reason why I phrase it that way is I recognize that we have an international audience and that some people abroad may not be able to understand kind of what we're talking about. I mean, maybe they can relate to it and that's okay. Uh I was, I was about to say that's great. And I'd be like, no, that's not good. Um, (laughs) (laughs) But you know, that, that we are consistently bombarded by this messaging about being, successful having Mm -hmm. the things like we used to say a long time ago i haven't heard it in a long time keeping up with the joneses you know that you were you know doing these things you were trying to live this type of life in which you were achieving Mm -hmm. and you were excelling and you were successful Mm -hmm. and all of that comes outwardly in the way of like a nice car nice home nice family nice blah 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 yeah for and that's that's unfortunate because for lack of a better like quicker thing um there are many people that don't can't 
for one reason or another, whether that's mental health issues or just, you know, the luck of the draw sometimes, you know. Um, and it's a shame that our society, especially here in America, is is so um, held on, you know, like um, to the point where it can it can be a potential hindrance. Like we know uh, people that buy things outside of their means for the sake of like you said, keeping up with the Joneses, you know, you get that card that you know you're never going to be able to afford. My brother, unfortunately, for a long time was guilty of this. He would do things and buy things and make himself feel to make himself feel better. And then months later, he would get repossessed because he wasn't paying the loan or whatever. And it affected his credit. And he's still kind of dealing with it to his day, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and, we, you know, everyone kind of has those things. And there's a responsibility aspect to it but there's also just like a do you really need it well i and you're you're right you know damien like i'm i'll own like i've been part of that i've bought things that i did not need but Mm -hmm. i wanted because i felt it would like give me not only personal satisfaction which is like kind of self-love but also like in terms of like being able to do certain things so like when i moved into you know the place where i am now um I wanted to be able to have people over. I grew up in a life with a home environment in which I felt I could never really comfortably have people over. Mm-hmm. I didn't like that. So I tried to keep my home a certain way that I can have folks over. And like the very first car, uh, let me think about this. No, actually every vehicle I've ever owned has been a four door. And the reason why is because when I was a kid, we had a car that was a two door and I always had to climb in and out to get into the back seat. And I found it really annoying as a child. God, to, mm-hmm. like, I did too, girl. <laughs> right. And especially when you're a, a thicker kid, like you know, like the space is smaller to get through when you're bigger. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't, you know, as overweight as I am now. I'll own that. But it was just one of these things that I remember, like detesting it so much mm-hmm. as a child. Even though in nostalgia, looking back, I loved that car. I wish my father had never gotten rid of it because it'd be. Like, not only worth a lot of money, but it'd be fun to have still this day. But the thing is, is I was like, I will never, ever in the history of owning a vehicle have a two-door car. Just can't. So I've always had four-door sedans because I want people to be able to get in, out of the fucking car on their own. Like, <laughs> without having to climb up over a seat or anything. Yeah. Besides so, those people who get stuck in the middle of the back seat. Also true. Yeah. Now with my own home, like I take pride in the fact that I have I have a kitchen table that has four chairs for it. Technically three are at it right now because it's up against the wall because I don't have that big of a kitchen. Mm-hmm. But like I have the ability to have like dinner for me and three people together if I wanted to. Mm-hmm. Um, my living room, I have a very large couch. I recognize part of the reasons why I bought the large sectional that I did was because I wanted to be able to have multiple people over. And I have. Like where you can comfortably fit like six people sitting side by side on this big ass couch. I've had yeah, people over. We've had games. They can be be all cuddly. Oh, that's true. So, and I've had like you know a couple times where friends have come over and we've done gaming stuff. And I mean it's been mm-hmm. a while and I miss that. But I recognize like that was part of the reason why I got the place that I did mm-hmm. was because I wanted to be okay with the fact that I could support that kind of an environment. But mm-hmm. I also got caught up in the whole like. I felt that I needed to be able to show that. So mm-hmm. I bought certain things and did certain stuff. And so it is it is a constant dance of recognizing why you're doing a specific thing. And I think self-love is a piece of that. You know, the, mm-hmm. I've heard this before, and I don't think many people do it very often. I know I, I certainly need to get reacquainted with it, which is to question your action. Why are you doing the thing that you're doing? Or why do you want to do the thing that you're doing? Like, here's a for instance. Like, if you're thinking about, like, making healthier choices when it comes to eat. If you find yourself compelled and you're going to stop it, let's – and this is not supportive. I'm just going to make a statement. So don't anybody get freaked out about this. If you decide that like you need like you want to go grab some dinner and you decide to go to Little Caesars and buy a pizza uh you know fast and ready for 555 or whatever. Mm-hmm. When you're doing it, if you don't question it or think about why am I doing this and is this a, a wise choice and is it the best choice for me, 
then it makes sense that you just kind of go through the motions of doing whatever that thing is versus being like, you know, I could spend the same amount of money and probably get a salad at a drive through from another company of some place. Sort. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, or, or you, know, you could go get that $5 uh, fast and ready pizza from, from little Caesar because you just want a freaking pizza. Right. And that's fine. But, and if that's what you want, want, that's what you're accepting. You, there's no like, Second guessing? Have your pizza. Right, but that second guessing is the big thing, though, Jeff, is later after said you've eaten said pizza or half a pizza or however much you end up eating at a pizza. <laughs> you're, basically, you're thinking, thinking, okay, I'm going to get this pizza, but am I going to regret this? Well, do you think, like, does it serve my best interest in this moment? There's nothing wrong with splurging and loving things, but as American society, we splurge 24-7. I mean, we... Fact. We True. take convenience like to the nines. Like I was just listening to a podcast where um, the co-hosts were in London for a month and they were talking about how things are very different there and how they operate. Some things are different there. And there are some things that they were critiquing that they didn't like, but they also admitted that like Americans are really spoiled because we could literally have anything anywhere at any time. Literally, you can mm-hmm. now not only do apps allow you on a phone to dial a dick, basically, as we tease, <laughs> you could also just dial up anything like, do you want like food? Do you want drink? Do you need shopping supplies? Like you don't have to leave your home. You don't have to mm-hmm. go where you can literally just have anything at any moment. And, you know, the sort of cap Hub, Instacart. Yeah, right. you literally and, can. And so I think Saves the, gas. Right. So I think the downside is is that we're so um reactive instead of proactive. So we're kind of like, oh, I'm hungry. I'm just gonna go eat something. And then you just eat whatever there is. And I'm just as guilty of this. So I am not like trying to act like I'm greater than anybody else. Trust me. Oh yeah. Um you know, I'm I'm I love to cook, but what I don't love about cooking is the time that it takes to cook. Like to actually make something officially here, here. As, opposed to, as opposed to like I bought some frozen dinner stuff on clearance because I was yeah. like, yes, like it's simple. It's easy. You pop it in the microwave and away you go. Where um, are our food replicators? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want a food replicator because that is incredibly dangerous. Um, <laughs> I would rather have the e-transporter technology because yeah. I would like to be able to get there. Honestly, there's some of their technologies. Just- Mm. And there we go. Um, <laughs> Gary's just like, yeah, nope, that's, nope, that's nope, true. Nope, nope, nope. Um, so one I will lead to the other. Anyway. My my whole point about it, I think, is, um, in self love, is when you're making decisions, or is it serving your best interest? Do you bother to ask yourself that question? Mm-hmm. You, you know, know? Um, I know that I have a, a personal issue that I want to improve on, which is I thrive off of being able to accomplish things in a short time frame. So mm-hmm. while I don't mind preparing for things. I actually feel better about getting things knocked out in less time by waiting basically to the last minute in a way. Mm-hmm. Like procrastination has a reward system in that if you're successful when you procrastinate, you get to feel great about how you did. Like, look at me. Like, I waited to the last minute, and I still succeeded. <laughs> I got an A on that test, and I didn't even study until, like, five minutes before the exam. Right. Yeah. And that's a thing that, like, you know, I'm not endorsing this by any means in imagination. It took listening to a different podcast and someone who I've, for a long time, kind of looked up to, who owned this and said, like, they were late to meetings, they, you know, waited to the last minute on some stuff, because they realized, and it took them going to therapy to realize, like, oh, I get off on this. Like, my payout, my benefit is, look at me, like, I get to run around and rush at the last moment, and I still make it happen. Mm-hmm. That's detrimental, not only in like a long term of your of your life potentially, but also yes. like when you involve other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like, they end I, up paying the price, so to speak, as well. Yeah. I think I was the same way, especially in college. Like I could write a paper like nobody's business, but the only way I could get it done was if it was like crunch time, and I was doing it literally the night before. Like I would get it written and done. I remember one of my last papers I wrote, I got an A on, and I wrote it literally from like twelve a.m. till. It was due at 8 a.m. Like, 
under the door and I'm literally at like 757 like like putting it in a door <laughs> like overnight writing this uh, writing a fucking paper that you that printed it thing. off rent to the professor's yeah. office slipped it under the door yeah yep. oh the old and days of after stapling technology. it right of course yeah like but like it's, but <laughs> you're it's not like gonna throw <laughs> just... like, throw a whole bunch of paper <laughs> <in the laughs> wait a minute table. is this page one or two <laughs> well they would be but, uh, they would be numbering technically <laughs> the way you did it if you put your name right. on every page. But anyway, but still, like, I, I totally understand that. Like, that's something that people could get, you know, not get off on. But, like, that's the thing that you do. Like, that's your enjoyment is, like, getting that goal and that short-term goal accomplished. Because we all do that sometimes in some ways. Like, um, we procrastinate. We're a society of procrastinators. I don't want to, like, knock that out. But we do sometimes wait till the last minute. Um yeah. It's one of been one of my personal things with work so far as I'm so fucking behind on shit that it's bothering the piss out of me and I want to get a whole lot done, but there's so much to get done. And I'm kind of having that whole like, like I'm trying to, it's taken me a while, especially this past year to kind of like go, Hey, like do what you can. Don't like stop stressing about it because you're never going to get it done. Like that sounds bad, but you're never going to get back to the place that you were before where you could get stuff done like this. I'm right. there's just too much to get done to make that a reality. So go in, do the best you can get as much done as you, as you can. And if you don't get it all done, so be it. So be it. Yeah. Um, and, I do want to, and, wanna, and I think that that's fair, Damon. I mean, and that's one of the things I think that's key about like, part of self-love is recognizing your limitations to say mm -hmm. I have the capacity to only do so much. Like, so as yesterday I went to the storage unit that I moved all of my mom's things into and I opened it up and then I was immediately overwhelmed because I forgot how much stuff there was. Like I know mm -hmm. how much stuff there is, but it was, I have, I also have an issue with kind of out of sight, out of mind sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I yeah, was I like, know Oh, know the feeling shit. So I was like, okay, and I needed to measure some furniture uh, to possibly be sold online. I was being asked some questions of family members posting it and trying to get some things. So I, so I started going through a couple of items, and I was like, okay, I am not here to fix all this. I am just mm -hmm. here to take care of a couple of things. Those are going to, like, immediately that I kind of knew but didn't have the time at the moment to, like, donate. It's like, okay, so here's some stuff. I'm going to fill my car. That's all going to be donations. This is coming home with me to be sorted through, measure some stuff, blah, blah, blah. So, but like, that's part of the whole thing is like recognizing what you, where you have a limit and to say that that's okay. Like, this is all that I can achieve in this moment. This is all that I can do. And mm -hmm. I mean, this is purely ridiculous, like as an example and silly, but it goes like in every direction. It's like, you do not have to wipe out the food buffet. You do not have to suck every dick like at the orgy you can recognize that there's a point where there's a limit. Wait, like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you, and and to, to put a slight counterpoint, you could also be, no, there really isn't a limit. I want to suck in. every dick in, in here. <laughs> this is, this is part of self-love. You that you may second get it guess yourself, but you may still be like, nope, that's really what I want. Right. I mean, and and this is why I say it's complicated because there's a whole balance. It's like, okay, so I do want it to suck every dick that's in this room. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> However, what are what are my physical limits? What's the time limit? Like, you know, what are what are the capacities to that? And how am I going to feel afterwards? A lot of that stuff that I was just talking about is what we don't do. And I'm not saying that we have to radically change our lives. Like, incrementally, just kind of consider yeah. about what your motivation of stuff is. Like, so, I own this. When I wake up first thing in the morning, I do not immediately jump out of bed. I am not, as Jeff has been so chipper this morning, you know, just... <laughs> Like grabbing life, you know. To, by, to be fair, uh, it's whatever. it's fading already. Yeah, it's basically it's because he was. I am currently fading. Like if all of a sudden I completely disappear from this conversation, yell really loudly to try to wake me up. Uh, uh, <laughs> but no. So the the I get that. Like you know, if you're if you're again, like know your limitations. Like, um, no offense, um, I have knee problems. So, like, if I'm 
sucking every dick in this room, um, I'm going to need to either make it so that I'm not on my knees the entire time mm-hmm. or like realize Get on the that coffee table, put point. your head over the ed- edge. Uh-uh. And just let it nope. No, 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 ma'am, no, ham. no, I will never. Oh, OK. So quick note. Um, Damon still has his tonsils. I am never doing that shit because um, that shit hurts um, after a while. I still have my tonsils. So I'd still do that. Wait, wait. What? Rewind. Hold on. Side <laughs> tangent. We are leaving the topic for a moment because now we're going to talk about tonsils apparently. Wait. Back up. <laughs> wait. Reverse it. David, you don't like what hurts? So when, when I. Okay. Okay. So. If I go, like ladies this, and gentlemen, we're talking about uh, deep throating here. Oh, yeah. like okay. If I on my back, my like, if I have a coffee table or something like that that pushes my these up. My tonsils are big, just so everyone's aware. Like, oh, they're not like average size tonsils; they're a little bit bigger. Um, anyway, so um, so when I am like this, is that what they're calling it now? The bit, the size of your. Tonsils? Tonsil. I'm not going to open my mouth. Tonsils? Anyway, but like, <laughs> my tonsils are a little bit bigger than normal. And because of that, certain positions for me do not work. Like, and one of those positions is me on my back with my, with my head back doing that. I can do that for a little while. We're, with we're also dicks, talking about a theoretical thing. So. <laughs> yeah. And, but like after a while, like, uh, uh-uh. uh, and if someone's a like face fucker, Mm-mm, so mm-mm. so let, let, mm. let's also back up a little bit here is to talk about <laughs> self-love. Okay. Back to self-love is, well, I appreciate the idea of the second guessing uh, yourself. I, you also have to realize that while second guessing can be very healthy, um, second guessing yourself too much can be to your detriment. So, <laughs> sorry. Some positions don't work. Well, not with that attitude. <laughs> yes, the live chat has been distracting us all. So, yes, listeners. <laughs> so, second guessing yourself is is can be a good healthy thing. It's just making sure mm-hmm. you're not like overly second guessing yourself. Like, if yeah. you have to spend more than like, I'll give it thirty seconds. Uh, when when trying to decide whether it's probably a good idea to get that uh, Little Caesars five dollar fast and ready pe- pepperoni pizza or not, then you're probably thinking too hard. Well, so one of my one of my things personally for me is I have the issue with overthinking. Like it's one of my flaws, and I will own it because I I don't overthink everything. But it that's one of my like. It's hard, difficult for me to make big decisions because I have to think about what it means right now and what it means in the future, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Because, like, if I get that fast and ready, ready pizza, will that uh, flare up my di- diverticulitis? Exactly. Or yes, if I get that fast, I'm getting pizza, a salad. Yeah, like if I get that fast and ready pizza, um. Like, what is that going to mean? Like, like, say an hour from now when I've eaten all of it and I'm still hungry. Like, just do I just have to, to be clear to to, to the entire audience, this show is not sponsored by Little Little C. <laughs> so I just would like to say this: I had this crazy thought. Like, is there such a thing as a fast and ready bear cub? Uh-huh. No, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, they're, they're, I'm sure I mean, they exist. I mean, maybe with like. You know, growler and stuff. Maybe I do. Um, sorry to get back on the topic because one of the things that I love because um, you heard me say it. So Owen said something that like hit the nail on the fucking head for me, like mm-hmm. about this whole thing. And it's like up in the chat. He says, um, "Self love is making the hard decision to walk away from something or someone that's a hindrance to your progress." Mm-hmm. And I was literally like. Um, well, go ahead, Owen, because that is like you go, girl. The thing for me, like mm. sometimes you have to know when to be like, nope, I don't. That's not going to help me in any way, shape, or form. 
Like that's not going to help me um, and move on from it and move away from it. Right. And, and to recognize that this is not a bad decision to end the thing. Mm -hmm. It can just be difficult. Yeah. Like, and, and that is to say, I mean, you could be ending anything. You could be quitting a job, like ending a job, ending a relationship, like stopping, you know, uh, being acquainted or connected to somebody, uh, you know, interacting with an individual. Um, I mean, it's kind of all over the place. Um, I think that, you know, the relationships that we have with people, things, you know, that kind of stuff is, is important and how we go about that is, you know, a part of how we consider ourselves like, do we make ourselves the top priority? So, uh, I think that the goal in this type of a discussion is for all of us to talk about like the different viewpoints of, of an item. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and give people stuff to think about. I mean, I like a lot of what was said in the chat, you know, responding to what we were talking about. Um, even though we didn't talk a, a lot about that, you know, I think that, uh, my hope is that, you know, people recognize that there's different ways to approach things. And this is really what it comes down to. I figured out in life, we have a problem as a human society that we think like, oh, here's the way to do the mm -hmm. thing. And that mm -hmm. is never, hardly ever the case. Like, that's the way we approach things because that's what makes sense to us. Like, evolutionarily, like, as a, a species, we were like, oh, if I don't do this, I don't die. Got it. But we, we, we kind of apply that way too much on a grand scale and say, okay, if I do this thing, I'm always going to get this result. But that's not always the case. Like, I think of it in terms of, like, our bodies and medicine and how we treat things. Mm -hmm. Just because like this one person does this one diet or this one person takes this one medicine or this one person does this type of a gym routine or whatever it is, doesn't mean you're going to get the exact same results or it's mm -hmm. going to turn out the same way. Um, I mean, this is, this is what it took me decades to realize after coming to terms with the fact that I liked men and I was attracted to penises and that I wanted them in my life was that they are not all the same. Like, no. <laughs> by any means of the imagination and that they are not <laughs> and that they are all beautiful and that they are all pleasant and they can all be enjoyed but that wasn't the message i had been sold because of the avenues of how our culture works you know it was that they all apparently should be big thick long fat like and it's like no that is not always the case mm -hmm. you know i'm sorry so, that i can't really uh, handle that long or that fat <laughs> I'd rather them a little bit shorter and a little bit skinnier. You know, a little bit of girth on them, you know. Well, and there's and there's ways to recognize, like, what we were talking about earlier about, like, limitations. It's like, okay, if that ain't going to fit, well, then let's figure out another way to have fun. You know? If it ain't going to fit, I ain't going to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I might touch it. <laughs> right, right, right. I was just going to say, like, you still. Uh, right. I might something. look at it like, I'm like, oh, that's pretty. <laughs> it, it it ain't going here and it definitely ain't going there um but no like i think i agree with you gary i think you know one of the things we should um realize especially with self-love is that you should know what you want yeah and can do for and, lack of and, a better term and if you don't know what that is there's nothing wrong with it like that's one of the things i'm dealing with right now at 45 is with the circumstances of my life recently, I recognize that, you know, I I have an unknown future and that's <laughs> disturbing me because I don't like unknown factors. But at the same uh -huh. time, I'm coming to terms with the fact that, like, yes, but it's also mine to decide. True. So I have to I have to be involved in that. I have to make those decisions. And I think that's part of what self-love is, like putting yourself first and making the decision of what you're going to do in that moment. But not only that moment, but the coming moments that add up to the minutes, hours, days, years, that kind of stuff. So maybe in this moment, you're going to decide to, you know, watch some porn and jack off and that's fine. Yeah. That's but, uh, what I expect to hopefully be doing in about a half an hour, but that's just. Me. <laughs> okay. So we know what Jeff is going to be doing or sooner if it ends up being that way, but you never know. Right. But you know, I mean, and I think really part of like what, one of the best things we can do about caring for ourselves is being aware of what we're doing and maybe doing a little like planning. Like mm -hmm. one of the things I know that I probably need to do is get my 
work clothes ready for the week so that I'm not rushing in the morning. You know, uh, like one of the things I know that Ray Smith is doing right now that I love him dearly for that he's pretty consistent about is like meal preparation is mm-hmm. that he makes him some stuff ahead of time. He posts about it online. So that way he, he like has his lunches or his breakfast or whatever and that kind of stuff. I recognize that some of it's part of like a health regime because he does like to go to the gym and like build those crazy ass legs that drive men crazy. Um, uh-huh. so, and that butt. But, <laughs> right. But and like that's, butt that won't quit. <laughs> But that's what. But that's you know how but he's doing. Hold the shot, right? And so I think there's many different versions of what self love is, and I think that we the goal in life is most likely to figure that out, and find your groove, figure out what your pattern is, what works best for you, and continue on that path. And there's nothing wrong with changing it as time goes by, because law knows I am not doing the things now in my 40s that I was doing in my 30s, let alone my 20s. Yeah. So. You adjust as you go along, and, you know, with what that's been. There we go. Yeah. So that's kind of like that. Uh, let us know what you think, you know, uh, if you agree or disagree. Send and us do email. you have suggestions on other topics that you would like us to discuss? Kind of yes. trying yeah. to elaborate on kind of a definition. What is? What is? It's, a, it's 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 kind of like the Marvel what if thing, except it's it is. <laughs> oh, speaking of, just so y'all are aware, because the people have been kind of like they got excited and then um, <clears throat> we didn't do it yet. I'm hoping that uh, the rest of the co-hosts will go watch the last, the latest Marvel movie. <clears throat> Endgame. So, yeah, so we could oh, have a discussion. Yeah, are are, are we it. missing one guy? Right? Because <laughs> I saw it opening night. I saw opening night with with a cute chubby cubby uh, puppy in, uh, uh, next to me. That's sweet. Actually, he paid for the movie and my food. It was awesome. Sweet. Aww. Anyways, hey, guess what, folks? This cub is fading fast. So Aww. that's the end. Oh. <laughs> Play ways to contact us. You can pop over to our website, cubsoutloud.com. Leave it a comment on the blog. Uh, what is your definition of what is self love? What is, what are uh, other things you would like us to talk about? You can comment on the blog there or shoot us an email at cubsoutloud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail, sexy or otherwise, uh, or even what you're to, to vocalize what your what is is. That's a lot of aces. At 361 COL Talk, that's 361 265 8255. You can find us in various social media outlets such as Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and right here on YouTube at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. You can uh, join our Entourage chat uh, for those people who stuck around to actually hear us talk about the Entourage chat at uh, tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col we had somebody who just finally listened to it and was like oh i didn't realize there was a telegram chat there is one uh if you would like to know when we will be airing these shows you can check out our google calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col you can get various merchandise such as these uh comes out loud logo shirts we've got three different uh designs our original generation, our second generation, or our third generation logos um, at zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Um, you can become a patron. Uh, we appreciate all the people who support us over on Patreon as little as a buck a month. Uh, or actually, I think you can get lower. It just doesn't hit any of the reward levels. Um, so check that out at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, you can also rate us on iTunes, subscribe to us to Google Play Podcasts. You can find me anywhere on the internet as Box Tech, Box Puppy, Box Cub, Box something or other, and sometimes listed as Wind in the Gamerverse. And that's W Y N D. Cool. Um, I am Theater Cup Seven Nine on most um, bear related etc. site platforms that you wish to find me, or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. That's G-A-R-B-E-A-R-7-3. You can add three X's to the end of that if you want to see the naughty stuff on Twitter. Not my naughty stuff, but, you know, naughty stuff. Uh, And then when you uh, follow any of us, let us know, like, hey, like, I follow you on COL on the podcast and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate it. Appreciate that very much. 
And with that, uh, say good morning, everybody. Good morning. Have a good one, y'all. Ha, 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 ha.